Hi, I'm Brindia Miller, just a girl who feels like she barely survived from being 18 to 29, from an abusive marriage to divorce, pregnant with my sweet girl, to the mom of an angel, and this was all before I was even 20. Since then, I married the high school sweetheart, had a sweet boy, wrote a few books, blogs, and in nine years, three states, four cities, 13 homes, two hotels, one angel girl, one sweet boy, a bunch of jobs, and an insane amount of love and laughter. Here I am, 30 years old, talking to you, sharing my wisdom from the infinite lessons I have learned while still learning to navigate around the things that I haven't. Come along and navigate with me. There is room here for your joy, your grief, your hormones, your emotions, your friendships, relationships, heartbreak, and all of the other things that come along with being in your 30s. Welcome to the In Your 30s podcast with your host, Brandia Miller. Today is my birthday and I am finally 30 and I thought what better day to launch a podcast navigating my 30s. Now some of you might be coming from my previous podcast or from social media and if that's the case, welcome back. If you're new here though, my name is Brendia Miller. I am married to my high school sweetheart. We've been married almost nine years and we have a son together. I also have a daughter from a previous marriage who passed away and if I'm being honest, I feel like I barely survived my pre-30s basically. Everything before this, I feel like I was always in fight or flight it was always a struggle, um, and I feel like when you're 19 and 18 and 20 and 21, we're often making big decisions because now we're adults and we can, but we really don't understand the consequences of those decisions, the consequences that they can have financially. We don't understand the consequences that they can have mentally. We don't have the understanding that these can also have physical consequences. And so I think that there are just a lot of things we don't understand as young adults that make our 20s a struggle. You know, one of the things that I didn't understand truthfully was marriage. And I'm obviously, I'm not talking about breaking laws and murder. We all understand that's wrong. But... Things like getting married young, not having the proper tools to communicate with your spouse, um, having kids young, how hard and difficult that is on your body, your finances, your mental health. These are all things that I wasn't really prepared for the consequences of. And I would say, honestly, I don't regret any of it, especially my kids. But I do wish I would have been better informed, been more open to suggestion from others, um, and just honestly put it on the back burner until I could figure out me. Because let's face it, when you're 18, you're 19, you're 20 years old, you're entire life just went from revolving around your friends to being an adult in civilization. And honestly, I don't feel like in a lot of cases there are a lot of resources to really educate young kids on how to basically improve their mental health as they're going through adult struggles and sustain good tools and so on in order to cope with all the things that basically are thrown at you as an adult. Because let's face it, it's a lot different going from high school to being on your own, having, you know, a full-time job and all these responsibilities and And for a lot of people like myself and people I grew up with, there wasn't an in-between. You went from, okay, I'm in high school to, okay, I'm on my own. And anyone who has had to jump straight from being a child 
teenager, whatever you want to call it, to an adult will tell you it is a struggle. Especially when you don't have the tools and the resources to maintain your mental health. And honestly, everybody's struggling and we all end up with our own lives and going our own paths. So it oftentimes feels very alone as well. As for me, 18, 19, and all through my 20s, it was definitely more so feeling like I was just in fight or flight all the time. And it felt like maybe the more that I dealt with, instead of feeling stronger, I felt worse. I felt weaker. And for me personally, I went from struggling, grieving, to grieving and struggling and drowning. And so basically, I felt like I could never catch my breath. I felt like I could never sit still or stop. And at one point, my insides physically felt like they were just shaking all the time because I literally was just so unhealthy mentally based off of everything I was going through and feeling so alone and just the early adult years and the consequences of my actions all coming together. And I finally hit a turning point a few years back when I left a job that I loved, but the work environment and the requirements were extremely toxic. And at that point, it was no longer just affecting me, it was affecting my entire house. So from that moment on, I have spent the last few years working on myself very deeply, very honestly, and very rawly. I've also worked on simplifying my life in a lot of ways. It's not just minimalism and the house being easy to clean for me. Now, for some, that's enough. As long as that's simplified, then you're good. And that's fine. If that works for you, that's great. But for me, I needed a lot more simplicity. And truthfully, every single day, I think about ways that I can simplify my life even more and I would be lying if I told you that I didn't think about going completely MIA, just disappearing off the face of the planet, basically, from everyone, literally every single day. However, I know that's not the solution. So instead of running from the problems that need simplified in my life, I've decided to create solutions. And my solutions may not work for everybody, but... Today, I'm going to share some of the ways that I am searching for simple. And by that, I mean, basically, I'm looking for ways to simplify my life in every category. Sometimes that's simplifying our finances. Sometimes that's simplifying our grocery hauls. Sometimes that is keeping myself out of high anxiety situations. But all the time, I just want life to be simple. Even in the struggles, even when it's hard, I want it to feel easier. And I think that there is a lot of ways that people can do this in their life that really bring benefits to the point that you don't notice that you're cutting stuff out and losing stuff. So after we get done with our ad, we will be jumping into our episode, Searching for Simple, and I'm going to just share with you what I do. If it does not work for you or would not work for you, that's fine. You are more than welcome to always take what you need and leave the rest.
The way that it has gotten me is that I would look at certain people on social media and I would feel like even though I wanted to do what they were doing or um, just learn from them, I wasn't ready because I wasn't in the same space as they were when I found them or when I was watching them do it in that moment. And it's funny because over the last few years, I've come to realize that everybody had a starting place and nobody was in the exact same spot or the exact same financial situation or whatever as they are right now, three years ago, four years ago. And so these were things that really triggered me to feel chaotic inside to feel like I was insecure about certain things of my life um, and so one of the ways that I have worked on social media and worked on it not being a trigger but still being able to use it regularly and for what I need is hitting that unsubscribe button that has done so much for me because that comparison of this person that has been doing this for 10 years and is here but I'm here can truly stop you from living in your purpose and it can truly stop you from doing the things that you need to be fulfilled and be happy and also finding inner calm because let's face it that's what it's all about simplifying your life is just trying to find some inner calm a moment of peace and give yourself a simpler situation to be in and be able to handle. So unsubscribing is one of the best things that you can do on social media. Unsubscribe to people that trigger you. Unsubscribe to people that you compare your life to. If they take offense to it, let them cry a river over there by themselves because it's not personal to them. It's personal to you. And your Simplicity in your life, in yourself, and how you feel about yourself and your life depend on it. Another thing that I do with social media is I have basically disconnected myself from most of the people that I follow that are just there to be there. So now, usually what I take in on social media is educational to the season that I'm in. Now, I'm not saying you have to sit on social media and only watch educational videos. I prefer to, at night, if I'm watching videos, it'd be gardening or something that I am currently passionate about or that relates to a season in my life. Um, I also like to use social media to improve on myself. And the way that I do this is I find people and channels and podcasts and um, pages and groups that give tips and support and basically that's it so like I will 
join pages that will help me better organize or meal plan or I will watch people who are licensed therapists or licensed in whatever field it is that I'm needing guidance in at that moment in my life and I will watch them and I will say you know what I'm going to be honest with myself I need to work on that and I'm going to apply the tools that they give in those videos. I would say 95% of my time on social media is generally spent and I'm talking about the time on social media that I'm taking stuff in not necessarily the time that I'm putting stuff out but I'd say 95% of the time is on educational self-improvement uh, life improvement stuff and the reason is because you are literally going to be whatever it is you take in so I try not to take in other people's problems I try not to take in other people's drama I try not to take in any content that is stressful or just puts me in a bad mindset I'm very very careful and mindful about my social media and what I take in I try to be very careful about what I put out you know all of that and sometimes we get like I don't want to say cocky but sometimes we get a little cocky and I was like you know what I have improved on myself so much and I'm going to join some Facebook mom groups you know um Basically, I did it to promote my page and get um, my numbers up and stuff. I wasn't really trying to go in there and get advice or nothing because I would never, I'm not a believer in putting your problems on Facebook. But um, I went in a group and I did comment on something and it was like all hell broke loose. You know how those groups are. And so, I eventually got banned. I wasn't very careful about what I put out that day. And that was on me. But I learned a good lesson. And I realized that sometimes, even when you feel like you're healed, your triggers can still trigger you. So, it's just easier to stay away and abstain. And so, that's what I, I do. I stay away and I abstain from social media triggers. And sometimes that actually includes news medias and stuff like that. Because let's face it, there's so much information swirling around about what is going on in the world. And every reporter, every news outlet is not telling all the details or whatever. So, and it can make it really difficult to decipher and chaotic because you can quickly go into a panic from reading wrong information basically so to wrap that point up <laughs> I am very mindful about social media I'm very mindful about who I follow I'm very mindful about what I post what I take in and I'm very mindful about the groups that I join the stuff that I comment on in those groups and stuff like that generally um again everybody backslides basically you know we all have bad days we all get out of character it's not always going to be perfect and simple and easy. That's life. But there are certain things just only we can control. And what we take in on social media is something we can control. Whether you read something, watch something, click a link, post something, that is something that you have control over. Another big way that I've spent simplifying my life the last couple of years is that I have truly decided that things don't matter. And not in a, I don't care, I don't have emotions, I'm too cold for this matter, but a simple reminder to myself when things go wrong that at the end of the day, it's probably not a big deal. One thing I started doing was with my son, I will remind myself when he spills something or if something gets broken that it's replaceable, but he isn't. And this is another good thing that you can put in your marriage or your relationships with others as well that you love and that you value because at the end of the day, people are not replaceable. There is never going to be another person like that person, period. They may be similar, but they're not the same. And you cannot simply throw one to the side and replace it with someone else. 
You can, however, throw a couch out and replace it. You can, however, replace broken glasses. You can replace toys. You can replace clothes. And so just keeping that in mind, like this is replaceable, but the way they feel about themselves, the way they look at themselves, and the relationship that I have built with that person so far is not. And a lot of damage can be done to a relationship when you make someone feel like trash for something so simple. You know, many years ago, well, not really many, but a few years ago, when my husband and I decided, like, we didn't want to throw in the towel, we didn't want to quit, we wanted to work on our marriage, one thing that I had to really work on is not making him feel like he didn't matter. And so, for me, I had to be mindful about the way that I reacted to things because he felt like often, and he had said this, that my reaction sometimes was way more dramatic than it needed to be. And there were a couple times that I was like, you know what, he is so crazy. I'm not dramatic. I'm. This is a fair reaction to this. And then I would watch how I would react to stuff and it would be like something simple that he couldn't control and I would just lose it. I'd be like, you know what, if you had a different job, then they would probably pay you on time and it would be correct. And it's like, it's not his fault that his job screwed his checkup. Um, and unfortunately in dealerships, that's actually very common because none of them seem to have enough sense when they're doing payroll. But, um, that was just a thing. That was a thing that I did. That was a flaw. And I really had to work on that because I've been doing it my whole life. And I didn't really realize that my reaction wasn't justified. My feelings were, but the way that I reacted was not the same. The way you react to a situation is not the same way you feel about the situation. You can be deeply hurt about a situation with a minimal reaction and you can be extremely happy over something with a minimal reaction. It doesn't, your feelings don't justify your reaction all the time. And my reaction was to lose my absolute crap. Um, and so I've really had to work on that because that's something that I have done my whole life. And I didn't really realize, but I've been told from other people that that's how they felt based on my actions too. So I think it's very important to be raw about your flaws and then to remind yourself, look, this relationship it's not replaceable. This person, they're not replaceable. The way they think about themselves is going to often be based off of how you treat them when you are someone that matters to them. And even if you are coming in contact with a complete stranger, a lot of times people take other people's actions and words so personally that it could affect the way they feel or think about themselves. Whatever you say or do, could be the last straw. So I've learned to truly simplify my relationships and the problems that I have in my relationships by just being mindful about the way that I react, the way that I talk to people and realizing that things aren't as big of a deal as they feel sometimes and that the feeling is justified, but it's the reaction to the feeling that needs to be evaluated and handled accordingly. They have a saying for this and it's called don't sweat the small stuff. And I honestly did not understand that statement as a child. I just, everything felt big. And even as an adult, everything still feels big. Um, just to be honest about it. But a lot of the times the things that we give big reactions aren't as big as they seem. So at the end of the day, don't sweat the small stuff. One of my favorite things that I have simplified lately is my mental health. And this is something that's been pretty new, I feel like. Um, but I think a lot of times because of the stigma there is on taking medication for mental illness or your mental health, like anxiety, depression, all of that, I think a lot of people truly are still uncomfortable reaching out, getting help. Um, 
I know people that are uncomfortable mentioning that they're getting help if it comes up. I know people who I have told that I reached out and got help. And then within 30 minutes, they've made the same statement everybody's got to have a medication, everybody's got to da 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 everybody's got a mental illness. And so, basically, um, I understand why people are uncomfortable doing so, but the thing about it is, if you do reach out for help, whether it's medication, therapy, whatever, then nobody really actually can tell until they can see the changes in you or until you tell them so if you don't want no one to know they don't have to and so I highly encourage if you need help reach out regardless of how your friends feel regardless of how your family feels you know the thing about it is my husband is not big in belief on medication and therapy until he got with me and unfortunately for us both, I am plagued with mental illness. And there's not been a lot of times in my life that I truly thought I am not going to make it out if I don't reach out. But a couple months ago, I was there. I was in the worst place I have been in a very long time. And I just, I had to do something. And so I was very, very desperate. And I used to watch like the commercials and the ads and stuff for all these apps that you can go through. And I finally signed up for the HERS app. And if you don't know what that is, it is an app for men and women. There's HERS and HIS or something like that. And so basically what it is, it's an app where... You sign up and you can get different like services, medications and stuff. So they do like hair loss. They do um, birth control, I think. They do anxiety and depression, which is what I signed up for. And so this isn't sponsored. This is just an app that I chose to use um, mostly because it was the one I seen Kristen Bell uh, advertised for. And I was like you know what I love that she's so raw about it and so honest about it and so I'm gonna use the app and basically it turned out to be a really really tremendous thing for me so anyways you sign up and you are you do have to go through like a test not like a test but like a diagnosis and you do have to um, keep in touch you are required actually to keep in touch with a psychiatrist that is board licensed and you can message them anytime for questions. They're very quick to message back. At least mine is. Um, and honestly, truly, it's amazing. And it's not for everybody. Don't get me wrong. It's not for everybody. But for me, it really simplified the issues I was having with my mental health and the problem that I was having, the disconnect between the issues I was having and the tools that I had, basically. Because up until that point, I had had the proper tools for what I was going through. But it got so bad that there weren't tools that I could use that were within my control. That I could find easily on the internet that wasn't a, sec a second person or a medication or something like that. There was just this major disconnect between how far down I was and the tools that I had to cope, deal, and heal. So, the app really, honest to God, you guys, it really did connect that gap. So, if you need medication, I definitely say you should reach out because this is one of the ways that I have simplified my mental health. Another thing is having a therapist that you trust and that you can confidently confide in. You know, I've had a lot, like way more than anyone my age should probably admit, of therapists. And some of them have been truly trash. And not trash like, oh, they're telling me stuff that I don't like, 
trash like I don't feel safe telling them stuff or trash like they're telling me stuff and I know for a fact morally it's wrong and so to this day some of those things that I recall therapists saying um, specifically one therapist but some of those things that I can recall being said I'm like even now happy and healed that was not the best solution especially for me having been a teenager when I seen a lot of these therapists but if you find a therapist that you click with that you trust that you feel like they're doing their absolute best to give you accurate and informative help they are truly trying to figure out the cause of the problem and they're making an honest effort at giving you a suggestion to fix it stick with them because it's not just lonely out here but there are just things that you cannot tell your spouse and I know there's people that say we tell each other everything my husband and I tell each other a lot of things, but there's things that he tells his friends or whatever that he cannot tell me. There's things that I would tell my friends or my mom or a therapist that I cannot tell him. And it doesn't necessarily always mean it's bad, but some things you just don't want to have to worry people about, you know. And it was really hard for me to tell him, hey, I'm depressed and I am numb and I don't know why but I know you're not doing anything it's not nothing you're doing and so to have someone else to reach out to and say hey this is an issue and I don't know what to do and I don't even know if I care enough to do anything and them giving you educated suggestions that can actually truly help is like it's chef's kiss it's amazing it's a world of difference and it really does take a load off your mental health to have somewhere to put that load that's designed for that load because a lot of the times our friends and our family they have their own loads and they can't physically carry our load or help us carry our load and it leaves us sometimes feeling like we're alone sometimes feeling like they don't care but we never really know what battle someone else is facing so it's nice to have someone who is purposely designed to carry that load with you until you know how to carry it or until you are comfortable sharing it with others to help carry it and honestly simplifying my mental health truly did wonders for my relationship with my child and my relationship with my husband and when I went into it my goal was my mental health but I'm so grateful the full effect getting my mental health in order and simplifying it and just making it easier to deal with has had on my entire life as a whole. So if you're someone who feels like this is something you need but you worry about the stigma or you worry about the um, medicine not being what you need exactly, understand a couple things. One, what other people think about you getting your mental health in check really actually does not matter and if they are against it they're against it because they use it and they use those issues as a way against you nobody for you is going to be against you doing something that you need especially when it comes to mental health and another thing to understand is the first medicine that you take is not always going to be the correct medicine there are times where people have to switch medicines and switch doses I've had to switch my dose quite a few times and raise it because my anxiety was still quite high even though medicine is based on science unfortunately what medicines work for who and how much of that medicine is necessary is not always a complete science. So make sure that if you and a psychiatrist decide that you are 
eligible for medicine and that it would be beneficial to you that you do your research, do your due diligence and really truly understand the side effects that can come and go a little further and see how, if you can find out how rare it is. Um, some side effects are rare, but they're listed and they're scary side effects. And so just always do your due diligence, always do your own research and make sure that you're good with what could come um, or that the benefits can at, at least outweigh the um, realistic possibilities of side effects. That was a mouthful and I was totally losing train of thought there, but just make sure that you are prepared for what is to come. Because truth be told, I was not actually prepared for some of the side effects like getting sick um, when I got on medication. However, I had started my medication and I was sick for the whole first week. And I remember looking at my husband about halfway through and I was like, if this does not clear up within this many days, I'm going to have to go off this medication. I can't do this all the time. And of course it did. It cleared up. And uh, then <laughs> I raised my dose and it came back for like two or three days. It wasn't very long. And so every time I've raised my dose now, I do expect that I will end up sick for that first couple of days. I'm at a point where I'm at a good dose that works for me right now, so I hopefully won't have to do that anytime soon. Um, but it was definitely, the risk was worth it. Even though I knew, like, I, I started taking it and I wasn't getting all the benefits because it wasn't doing everything I needed, but it was also making me sick. I was in this place where I didn't know if this was going to work, but I had to decide if it was worth it and it was worth it. So just make sure that you understand the side effects understand what can happen um, and how to safely start taking it or tapering off of it. Talk about these things with your psychiatrist if this is a route that you want to go. And honestly, I do suggest understanding the side effects of tapering off of the medication before you even get onto it as well because you never know what will happen and why you may need to um, get the medication out of your system. So definitely just talk with a psychiatrist, a board certified psychiatrist in your state so that you can learn all your options, learn all the side effects, learn all the things that you need to before starting a mental health journey with medicational assistance. That's basically what I'm going to call it. Um, we may talk about this later on. There's a lot more things that I do to simplify my life. And this definitely, one episode's just not enough. Um, but thank you for joining us this week. Thank you for listening to me rant, ramble, and give my unsolicited advice. And I will see you guys next week. Hopefully you'll stick it out with us because there is so much more to come, so much more to discuss, and so much to look forward to in your 30s thank you for listening to the in your 30s podcast with your host brendan miller hopefully i will see you guys next week you can click the show notes and find all of my links to my amazon store facebook tiktok and more and i will be happy to have you on any of those platforms as well if you have any questions about the In Your 30s podcast or if you are interested in being a guest on the podcast, please reach out to me. I would love to have you. I would love to sit and talk to you about relevant things to anyone in their 30s, whether it be motherhood, whether it be mental health, whether it be your actual physical health, relationships, divorce, grief. We are all ears. There is space for you here and we would love to talk to you. So feel free to reach out anytime and I will see you guys next week. Bye.